Okay guys, because I'm always experimenting and always trying to find new ways to get super high detail in my furniture, I wanted to add this little bonus tutorial in here. Something I've been experimenting with. You can see here that this cushion, I'm just doing a sample cushion, and it's got these nice wrinkles in it. They're not the best shaped wrinkles, but you can see how efficient that model is, even with that wrinkling in there. Usually with wrinkling you have to use really high polygon models and maybe sculpt them in mud box or model them in here in 3d studio max and just turbo sp smooth them a couple different times and uh you get you get a lot of really high poly models which makes it very hard, hard to deal with the uvw mapping so i want to find an efficient way and i just want to show you an example of what i've been experimenting with this is a really efficient model that's all UVW unwrapped properly, and I'll show you how I did it. So down here I have the original before it's all turbo smooth and everything. Let's just look at this one first. If I turn off the turbo smooth and turn off the displace modifier, turn off the other turbo smooth, it's got two turbo smooths on it, it looks like that. So it's all cut up real weird. But when I turn everything back on, everything is quads, and it's a very efficient model. You can see very kind of low, low poly, low tessellation over here, and high tessellation only where I have my wrinkles. So let me just show you how I did that real quick. And this will help give you ideas of how to add more wrinkles and high detail to your furniture. Now, I will say too that. If I had a, hold on a second. I will say too that if I had a, a 3D scanned cushion of an actual cushion with actual wrinkles in it, that would actually make this process a lot easier. But since I don't have that, I'm going to kind of have a workaround. And essentially what I'm going to be doing is cutting in lines like I've showed in other videos where those wrinkles are going to be. So if I had a scan one below, I could just cut right to those those ridges and valleys and then use some of these graphite tools to conform my model to the scanned model. So kind of like retopo tools right over the top of it. Since I don't have that, I'm going to do a workaround. If we look in here, if I apply a unwrap UVW modifier and then look in the editor, you can see I've already got my UVs unwrap properly. And I actually already have a map painted for this too. So I'll just apply that right now. If I apply this, make sure that that is showing in the viewport and then we'll go to shaded instead of so there you go. This is not the best map. I'll show it to you real quick. I painted it really quickly in Photoshop just as a demonstration. So those don't really look like wrinkles, but it'll get the point across. Now what you could do is search Google and find some really nice wrinkle maps and map them onto this pillow. And then what I did is just go in and start cutting right where I need to. Actually, I can just collapse this. I can just start cutting right where I need to for those wrinkles. So if I go into edge mode, go into the cut tool, and just start cutting. And we'll cut right up to there. You'll have to practice this a little bit, that was a bad one, in order to uh, have a good idea of what the Turbo Smooth is actually going to do when you apply it. It seems a little unpredictable at first, but I think it's all about getting the hang of it. So that line will be kind of for, for the valley of that wrinkle. Kind of 
kind of like this. And I won't do this whole cushion, but I'll just use this as an example, these wrinkles over here on the end. And then you can maybe bring them around the corner. Now that there is what I know you don't want. That will that will cause problems as you try to turbo smooth. But we can do that. You want to try and connect all your cuts to each other. Now this one what we can do is go That's where we'll have to add an edge loop all the way around, probably. So let's hide this other one. So here we could just use the quick slice tool. Maybe like that. And then make sure that we kind of connect these two things here. So, so that that has an edge loop to connect to. Let's target weld that together like that. Now let's see what that gives us. If we put a turbo smooth on. Let's go into clay mode again so we can see. Now you can see that's working well on the top where I made that extra loop up there not so well on the bottom. So I'll have to clean that up as well. You can't just have these vertices come and end randomly. So let's do some more cutting. Just like we did up on top. That was a bad cut. Okay, so I'm gonna cut just like I was up on top. That loop is already there for me. If you want more wrinkles, you can just add more cuts. You can cut one right up to center there. Now the reason I had the image there is to act as a guide and right now I'm just kind of making things up as I go. But it gives you the idea of what you can do. So there we have that. Let's make sure that that can be turbo smooth nicely. Just like that right there. It's not bad. Turn it up again, it looks like that. And you can keep cleaning this up if you want. But the point is, once we turbo smooth it like this, then we can put the displacement modifier on it. And since we have a UVW unwrapped, we can just use existing mapping and then we take this bitmap here copy it we actually want to let's do it like this drag it copy it to the map slot instance it. Now when we turn up the strength of that displacement modifier you can see it's using that same map that we were using as if I go to back to shaded mode it's using that map to displace so depending on what our settings are the wrinkles are going to follow those cuts we did exactly. You can do it pretty dramatically like that. And then I would just add another turbo smooth on top of that. Now if I put it in shade in clay mode, you can see that I've got wrinkles following 
right where I was doing those cuts. Because I used the same map as my guide and as my displacement map. It was UVW unwrapped properly so that I could add these wrinkles into here. So if you were pretty meticulous about this, you could go across and model a bunch of wrinkles. I would suggest starting with a better map than what I had. Start with a really good map and you'll get really good results. Because that will be a nice clean displacement for you. It will also be a nice clean guide for where to cut up your model more. And as you can see, TurboSmooth does a really good job of quantifying everything. So everything's quads. And this is a much more manageable model than just having the whole thing turbo smooth, because that makes it really hard to adjust anything on the model. It makes it really hard to select anything on the model and to make UVW unwraps for that model. So this is just something I've been experimenting with. Add this to your toolbox. Add this to the back of your mind for things that you can do. Another thing that is possible is to get a nice flat plane with a bunch of model, uh, modeled wrinkles on it that you've either, either sculpted in Mudbox or downloaded off the internet or something and then you could just put put that behind this cushion and use these graphite tools to push this model to the model behind it, to the model with the wrinkles. So again, you could use that model as your guide and you can go and cut in more tessellation where those wrinkles are at. And then you could just push all these vertices onto that other model, kind of project them onto it so that it would basically absorb those models. And you'd have the tessellation in the right places because you cut it manually. So I can show more about that in another video, but essentially that's the idea. Hopefully this video is helpful for, for you for giving you more ideas of how to get super high poly details, super high poly furniture without totally overrunning your computer and your RAM with millions of polygons.